The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and be, were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandal I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Children, come forward, please. <laughs> the Lord be with you and by the time you're 13 you'll know the answer <laughs> now I have a question for you are you a good boy <laughs> that was kind of a slow answer do you know Santa's coming uh -huh. are you going to be a real good boy <laughs> because you know you're supposed to be good before Santa comes. You know that, right? Uh huh. And did you know that Jesus is coming too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus is coming. We don't know when exactly. Santa will come December 25th. And we don't know when Jesus is going to come exactly. But we're supposed to be good because Jesus is coming. Can you do that too? Can you be good because Jesus is coming? Yeah, okay. If you're going to be good for Santa, and Santa knows that Jesus is coming, then you can be good for both of them, right? Yeah, both Santa and Jesus. You're thinking about this now. <laughs> okay, you can go back. <laughs> Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our lesson in Second Peter is a wonderful lesson. It quotes Psalm ninety. that a day in the life of God is like a thousand years for us. So when God says, okay, I'm going to come tomorrow, 
That could be a thousand years from now. So the question for us, and it's the, the question of the whole season of Advent, is what do we do while we wait? It's a penitential season. Because we want to be ready when Jesus comes. So with that as a background, we go back to Second Peter, and the reason he was comforting his congregation is because they were under stress. There were people going around calling themselves Christians, but they, they said, uh, these are called Gnostics, the Gnostics said they knew more than the Bible, so that in places the Bible was wrong. When you know more than the Bible in places, in places the Bible is wrong, that's called a Gnostic. And St. Peter says, but you know that you have the whole witness of Scripture. You have the witness of eyewitnesses. You have me, because I was an eyewitness. All of that agrees. So don't fall. Don't fall for the false gospel. Don't fall for people leading you astray. Rely on Holy Scripture and the Holy Spirit. Now it's in that context that he is reminding them that God is coming. But, you know, we're not going to tell God when to come. Because God has his own sense of timing, and that's what this Psalm 90 quote is meant to remind us of. God has his own sense of time. He will come when the time is right. Reminds me of a story. <laughs> the story is of a... You know, you know the, have, you, have you noticed that the economy isn't doing too well? You notice that, especially those of us drawing our retirement savings that dwindles. Well, there is an investment banker that decided to go back and live on the land, and <laughs> well, you know when a city slicker does that, it doesn't work out too well. He wanted to, he wanted to landscape his property and have a nice vegetable garden and all of that, and. Wanting to hedge his bets, he also decided that he was going to be a consultant because he had lots of experience as an investment banker. So he was going to be a city slicker farmer and a consultant. Well, the consultant business actually began to pick up rather quickly and he began to leave for longer and longer times and the property began to suffer. So he called up the uh, university horticultural specialist, you know, a woman with a PhD and who actually knew something about this stuff. And she said, well, you know, you, there are certain things you can do. You, you can put in sprinklers, for instance, so everything is watered at the time it's supposed to be. But you can't install automatic weeders. You, you know, they make little robots that will clean your floors for you. Do they do that for grass? Anybody who is a little mechanical would make a billion dollars if you did that. Now, at any rate, she, uh, she, she basically said when he kept insisting that there had to be a way that this could be done with little or no input from him, she basically came up and said, there will be no garden without a gardener. Now we know that. There will be no garden without a gardener. In, our, in the context of our text this morning, there will, no, there will be no spiritual garden without a Savior. And that Savior is working with us 
through the Holy Spirit to prepare for the coming of our Lord. Now, we know that Jesus is coming. That's not the issue. Jesus is coming. And we know the Holy Spirit is with us. That's not the issue either. And we have a basic idea of what it means to be a good Christian. Now, St. Peter is reminding us that Jesus will come like a thief in the night. And so while we're busy preparing for the rest of our life, and at this time of year, preparing for the festival of Christmas, we also need to be preparing for Jesus' return. And that the way to prepare is to live a life that is blameless. Now how can we live a life that's blameless? Is there anyone here who is blameless? Raise your hand so we can all imitate you. No. Blameless means forgiven. We need a life that is forgiven. And forgiveness comes in repentance, and repentance reminds us that Advent is a penitential season, a time of forgiveness, so that we can fling ourselves on the mercy of God. We can rush to church so that our sins can be forgiven. We can pray every single day that our sins can be forgiven, so that when the birth of Christ comes, or Christ himself comes, we will be ready. Not only will we be ready, but we will be pure and blameless. Isn't this the way we want to prepare for Christmas? Amen.